What is up, YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun Gaming, and welcome back to He Who Fights With Monsters, Book 4 by Chertelier. We're on at Chapter 73, I Need Time. Jason heard Hero, Ken, and Farah having a discussion as he trudged through his houseboat towards the lounge. The point of setting it up this way is so that it can be modified as magical conditions change, Farah was explaining. Do you expect magical conditions to change, Hero asked? Yes. Why? Farrah looked up at Jason as, as he made his way through the door. For now, she said. Let's just say I'm confident that they will. Jason slumped into a chair and Shade approached, placing on the table a tray bearing an immaculately plated omelet, a large glass of juice, and a neatly folded cloth napkin. Thanks, Shade, Jason said with a tired smile. You're getting pretty good at this. I have been watching old episodes of Miss Asano's first cooking show on the internet, Jace Shade said. It has many useful tips for people new to the methods and ingredients of this universe. Pharaoh, Hero, and Ken shared a look and got up, the men greeting Jason on their way out. Farah dropped down into the seat opposite him. You look tired for a man who slept this late, she said. He didn't answer immediately, having a fork full of omelet in his mouth. He took his time, chewing slowly, before putting down his fork and dabbing at his mouth with the napkin. I've been thinking about when you and I first met, Jason said. Not the very first part with the sacrifice and the shovel. I think that was mostly you. I'm talking about the little village with the waterfall. Didn't I see that village getting destroyed in your recordings? You did, Jason said. You seem to have some fate with that village, Ferris said. Every time you go there, you're protecting it from monsters. Not protecting it well enough. At least the people I got out, but their homes were razed to the ground. The Duke sent funds, so hopefully they're back and resettled by now. I was thinking about all that. When the three of us were passing through, I was so lost, still half convinced that I'd gone mad. I knew nothing of where I was and what was happening. It, what I did know, I didn't believe. I remember, Farrah said. You were kind of a mess, although you befriended the entire town in about a day. Those people were the first thing to make sense to me on your world, Jason said. They reminded me of my Uncle Rabo. My mom's whole side of the family, really, except mom herself. I used to spend a lot of time with them because it annoyed her. She doesn't like to be reminded that she came from common stock. I met your Uncle Rabo, I think. Twice, Farrah said. I still like him a lot more than her. That's a common reaction. So I was in this village with no idea of what to do, caught up with strangers that, to me, were very strange indeed. I'm not strange, Farrah said. That depends on context. Speak for yourself, Farrah said. I used to think everyone from your world was strange, but it's really just you, your sister, and your sister's kid. You're all weird, irrespective of context. Anyway, Jason said, the point is that I was feeling completely adrift. No direction, no purpose. That was when Rufus told me something that was really important to my time in your world. This one, too. If you say so, Farrah said, I mostly remember Rufus kicking a sigh off the contract. He told me that your world was a chance to reinvent myself, to become the person I always wanted to be without the baggage of my old life. I didn't always succeed, but I always tried. Ah, Farrah said, now you find yourself back here and weighed down with all that baggage you put aside. Exactly. I don't think reconnecting with who I used to be is intrinsically bad, though. Back then I was a naive idealist, who had never had his principles put to the test. It felt like every time my ideals were put under a strain, they crumbled. I think it's good for me to take another look at those principles. Yes, they were foolish and innocent, but they also represent ideals that I think are worth striving for. You want to be the best of both worlds. Literally. The problem is, I feel like I'm becoming the worst of them. All the baggage from here bringing out the reactionary aggression that kept me alive over there. The solution seems obvious. Ever since you returned to your world, you've been introducing your family to magic, dealing with a world you never realized was full of magic to begin with, working to rescue me, usually more than one of those at the same time. You went through worse after getting here. I did, Ferris said, but at least what I went through was simple. You've been fighting through a tangle, and we both know you get caught up in your own head. Well, I can think nice, clean lines. I see direction, and I walk it. Well, you can't help but diving into the weeds. You need to step away from a while and find your way back to a straight path. I was thinking the same thing, Jason said. I'm going to start by letting Erica take over the family stuff 
and pulling out of network activity while I get my aura control in order. Then I might take off for a bit. Some time to clear your head might do you well. You may wish to get away from home altogether. I think I will. I've been to another world, yet there's so much of this one I've never seen. It might be time to remedy that. I'll need you to watch over things while I'm gone. I'll take most of the shades with me, but I'll also leave one so you can always reach me and I can check in. One for Emmy, too. If something happens, Shade can get her to you. How long will this sojourn of yours be? Farah asked. I don't know, Jason said. As long as it takes, then I can come back without losing myself. Really, Erica said. Everything that's going on and you want to take a gap year to bum around backpacking. This is new to you, Ari, Jason said. For me, everything's been going on for a while. They were on the roof deck of the houseboat, as Jason explained his intentions. Jason, do you really think now is the best time to be traipsing off? Erica asked. I won't go for a few weeks, but yes, I have responsibilities that I'm not yet ready to meet. I need time, Ari. Time away from monster armies and interdimensional invasions, from secret societies and from families so caught up in their own revelations that they don't stop to think about the fact that I've been through this, even when I recorded the entire bloody thing. He got out of his chair and proceeded to pace around the edge of the deck, drawing a sharp breath he didn't need to and slowly letting it out. He leaned on the railing, looking out over the water. The day was overcast, painting the sea gray. I'm sorry, he said. Any emotion washed out of his voice. That wasn't for you. Yeah, it was, she chuckled. I wanted you to yell at me. You always box everything up and hide it behind a clown mask. I'm so glad you're willing to open up. I need time, Harry, he said again, still staring out over the sea. I'm dangerously off balance and I can't afford to be. My mistakes can really hurt people and my failures. He hung his head. How am I meant to save the world, he asked, his voice cracking. How can that be on me? Two years ago, I was selling staples and rubber bands. You know what a mess I was? How can anyone expect me not to bugger this up? Erica moved up to Jason and put an arm around his shoulder. I always knew that you could do great things, Jason. I was more thinking state parliament than fighting evil, but still. He snorted out a laugh in spite of himself. This whole thing is absurd, he said. It's been from the beginning. I took a lot of stupid risks because of what was in my head. I never felt real. Then Farah died. All of a sudden, it was very real. But I just kept taking risks because I felt invincible. Then I was grabbed and someone tried to feed me to the builder. That hit me for six, but eventually I was back to risk taking because it's what had to be done. And we did get it done. Erica sighed. We've been so caught up in all the strangeness you brought home that we never thought about the fact that you went through all of that and more, and you had to do it when you were lost, alone, and in danger. I see the way you are now, and I don't think about how much you, how you must have been then. Now I can't help thinking about how much you did, you didn't put in those recordings. There was some crazy stuff, Jason said. Me and this guy, Hiram, we got shot off the side of a mountain by a magic waterfall. It stopped all of a sudden, and we were trying to figure out why when it started up again. We were fine because magic powers. That was my third day there. I can't imagine. That's nothing, he said. I've met gods, Eerie. Actual, honest-to-goodness gods. Standing in their presence, you can feel the divine power blasting over you. It's like a tsunami with a superiority complex. If they want it to be, they can tone it down, but they usually don't. Reap the wonder of the masses and whatnot. I'm not sure how to respond to that, Erica said. You said you want to come with, Jason said. If you do, you'll see them yourself. Gods aren't shy. She sighed again. I want to be here for you, little brother, but you talk about these things, and I don't know how to em em emphasize as much as I want to. Empathize as much as you I want to. You're describing things so far removed from anything I know. I guess that's the problem, isn't it? Farah's the only one who really understands what you've been through. In so many ways, Jason said. We both know what it is to wake up in a strange world. What it is to die. I died, Airy. I know you've all been ignoring it because here I am alive, and I've been known to say some outlandish things, but it happened. I died. It was violent and painful, and I wasn't expecting to come back. I felt that certainty that my life was over. I can't imagine that. I keep saying that, but it keeps being true. It's not just that things 
the things that were done to me either. It was the things I did. I killed people. I saved people. I've been a hero saving lives and a monster reaping them. I found companions who meant everything to me. Only you and Emmy mean as much. I want to see that world, Erica said. I want to share your experiences, see those wonders, and understand those horrors. If that's still what you want when I get back, he said, then I'll take you. There's plenty of time to decide one way or the other. I can't make promises about the other side, though. It's a world where my power is insignificant. I can't not go, Erica said. Not now that I know what's out there and Ian's the same. I know he plays the straight man to his wife and daughter, but he's got a beautiful passion in his soul. I married him for a reason, and as for our daughter, well, at this stage, if we try to keep her from the other world, she'll never forgive us. Farah and I have been talking, Jason said. If you're serious about coming with us, you'll need to start making big choices, such as taking Emmy out of school. She already knows more than most kids do by the time they leave high school. What they have left to teach her, she won't... What they have left to teach her won't matter in the other world. She needs proper intensive training. Only if she's going to fight monsters, Erica said. I don't want that for her. Mom had very specific ideas about what she did and didn't want for me, Jason pointed out. I don't think it worked out well for her, but I suppose it won't be like that for you and Emmy. After all, she's nothing like me. Point taken, Erica said. I just want her to be safe. I know you said that safety might not be an option, though, even if we stay here. Just giving the idea of homeschooling some thought, Jason said. I know how big of a change it is. It's deciding the future of your family in a single moment. Homeschooling, Erica said. You can't train her if you're off who knows where. Vera can train her better than I can, and I won't be gone forever. While I am, I'll need you to step up and take the family in hand. Did Ketavon call you? Yesterday afternoon. I had to dampen her enthusiasm. She would have all had us in a room at six in the morning, given her way. I think she wants to steer you away from my influence. That's a sound approach to most things, Erica said, squeezing her brother's shoulder warmly. I really am glad you're opening up, Jace. I want to be there for you. You just have to let me. Tell me that you aren't leaving just to run away. I'm not running away, he said. I know who I was here, and who I was there. I need time and space to figure out who I am in both, who I want to be, and how to find my way to that. All right, Erica said. You'll have to take a lot of Uncle Jason time before you re go, you realize. There are worse burdens, he said. Sitting in a meditative pose, Jason opened one eye to watch Farah floating in the air. You're not concentrating, she scolded, her eyes remaining closed. Levitation, Jason had discovered, was a perk of reaching silver rank. It was an intrinsic property of a silver rank soul, allowing the aura it projected to physically affect the environment. Jason's aura, despite being stronger than Farah's, could not equal the feat. It was a quality versus quantity issue. Jason lacked not the aura power, but the inherent properties of a silver rank soul, which hadn't stopped him from wasting a good amount of time trying to replicate it anyway. You need to get back to aura training, Farah admonished. This levitation isn't even a practical ability. It requires intense concentration, has minimal effect, and is easy to disrupt with just basic aura suppression. Yeah, but floating as you meditate looks super cool. When rebuilding his suite of aura control techniques from scratch, Jason drew on various sources of knowledge, experience, and inspiration. Farah's instruction was the bedrock, as her mastery of orthodox aura control technique made the perfect foundation onto which he could build more exotic approaches. That began with his own experiences. He had seen a lot and frequently used his aura in combat. His soul had been savaged to the limit of tolerance and, with help, come back stronger than ever. All of that gave him a wealth of personal experience to incorporate into his aura control praxis. Vermilion also had contributions to make. While the vampire's aura operated somewhat dissimilarly to an essence user's, he had numerous insights into fine aura control, having spent decades using it on normals without them ever even being the wiser. A source of his inspiration was the sole diamond ranker Jason had ever met, the Mirror King. His aura had felt like a part of the world around it, as if his very nature was in perfect symbiosis with the entire world. Jason had only been an iron ranker at the time, with only the beginnings of aura strength he now possessed. He didn't know if the Mirror King's aura truly did merge into the world around it, or if it was some manner of exquisite technique. 
Either way, he kept the Mirror King in mind, as he established not only a new baseline for his aura, but set a path for further growth. The finer pillar, the final pillar on which Jason suppo supported his new techniques, was Shade. The elusive shadowy entity had a natural proclivity for stealth and years of practice that put the Mirror King to shame. He had an extensive knowledge of the Order of the Reaper stealth techniques and had accumulated knowledge of previous Essence users he had also served as familiar for. Jason had never been able to emulate Shade's own aura masking prowess. Shade's method of producing an aura was more alien than Vermilion's, or at least it had been. With the world phoenix's blessing, Jason's spiritual nature had grown much closer to that of an astral being. The methodologies didn't directly translate, but Jason was able to gleam at least some insights from Shade's bounty of knowledge and experience. Over the course of a month, Jason spent almost every moment either in seclusion on the houseboat or discussing aura techniques with Farah, Shade, or Vermilion. Whenever he took a break, he sought out his niece, not for training, but simply for family time. He had already passed Emmy's nascent training program fully into Farah's hands. The only other exception to his dedicated training was a weekly gathering of friends and his closest family. And that's the end of chapter 73. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, have fun, guys.